Shoulder, look out toward the east, for there the celebration starts when you expect it least. Some base their life on speculation on things they've heard, but I will base my future according to his word. Everybody ought to be smiling now. Amen. Look up. Are you ready? Are you ready? Amen. God is good. He's coming back and we better be ready. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord this morning and to see your smiling faces and to just gather together with God's people. It's a great time to come and fellowship and love on him and worship him and sing praises and hear the word of God. So we're glad that you're here this morning. And I know we have some visitors, and we just want to welcome our visitors, and uh, thank you for being here this morning. We know that uh, God brought you here. He brought all of us here today, and I know that we'll be blessed for having been in the house of the Lord. So welcome to the service here this morning. Uh, 
We will not have services this evening in light of Bill Mason's uh, viewing at uh, what, which funeral home is Nicholson Funeral Home this evening from 6 to 8. Uh, so keep that in mind. And um, there are some meetings that were supposed to take place. Uh, youth, we will not have drama this evening, but we will have drama Wednesday at 6.30. Personnel committee, you will not meet this evening, but you will meet Wednesday at 6.30 as well. And Angie is rescheduling the, the children's meeting to next Sunday at 6 o'clock. So just keep all that in mind and then be much in prayer for the Bill Mason family during this time of, of their loss and Bill's home going. So uh, thank you for that. Um, Wednesday night, uh, Pastor Cook is going to be away this week in revival at Taylor Springs Baptist Church. And so Wednesday night, his niece, Joy, and her husband, Rodney Ballard, are going to be here to share about their upcoming uh, missions work in Africa. So you'll want to be here this coming Wednesday night to uh, hear them. And uh, Pastor Cook, what time are the services at Taylor Springs this week? 7 o'clock each evening, uh, Monday through Friday. They're doing a, a real revival this fall. And uh, Pastor Cook's going to be there, so we might want to consider going out and supporting him any other way, evening but Wednesday. Wednesday night, be here. Uh, and uh, God will honor that. So I think that's all I have in the way of announcements. Um, but it is just, again, so good to see you in the house of the Lord. We want to stand together, join hands across the aisle this morning as we go to the Lord in prayer, uh, thanking Him for His goodness to us, thanking Him for His love and His mercy and His grace, and lifting up the needs of our church family. Let's pray together this morning. Heavenly Father, as we enter into Your house this day, Lord, more importantly, we want to enter into Your courts with thanksgiving your gates with praise. We want to thank you and honor you and bless you and praise you and magnify your name this morning. Lord, thank you for how the choir has already so beautifully done that. And Lord, I pray that each of us in our hearts and our minds are looking up to you today. Thank you, Lord, for the promise of your word that we have salvation through Jesus Christ and the promise of your word that you are coming back one day. So, Lord, let us be living with eternity in mind. Let us be living with that thought in mind that you're coming back to get us. And, Lord, let us be about your business each and every day. Father, we love you. We thank you. We praise you this day for who you are, for all that you do. And, Father, as we come before you this morning, Lord, we just pray that your Holy Spirit would fill this place with power from on high, that you would stir our hearts to look to you and to worship you, Lord, that you would stir our hearts to deal with things in our life that you want us to deal with this morning, Lord, that you would stir our hearts to reach out to others during the week. But, Lord, we ask you to minister to us today. Father, I pray that you'll be with Pastor Cook as he comes later in this, this time to bring the word. And, Father, that you would give him the word that you would have us to hear. I pray for your anointing to rest mightily upon him and i come against every hindrance and distraction that would keep your word from going forth lord i pray that you will give him the words to speak and give us ears to hear and father we'll go away changed father we want to lift up our church family lord and uh, the, all the needs that are represented among our church family father we ask you to reach down and touch and meet those needs as only you can. Lord, we especially lift up the Bill Mason family, that you would be with them in a very present and real way this day. Father, that you will strengthen and comfort them as only you can. And Lord, that your peace will rest in their hearts today. Father, for others in our church family that have various needs for healing, Lord, we ask you to reach down and bring healing to their bodies. Lord, those that have financial difficulties we thank you that you're jehovah jireh our provider and lord we ask you to reach down and and meet those needs as only you can be with us now lord during this time may your will be done may jesus be honored and glorified and it's in his precious and powerful name that we pray amen I'm going to ask our children, if you would, to come on down to the front now as join Mr. Frank Hutchins for Children's Church.
Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How are you guys this morning? Good. <clears throat> Anybody have anything exciting this week to happen in, in your life? <clears throat> anything happy, good? Well, the Lord's blessed us truly. <clears throat> uh, and uh, I'd like to share something with you this morning that, uh, <clears throat> that I, <clears throat> excuse me, I sort of got to Lumbago, but I have to constantly be reminded of this, and I was reminded of this thing. Uh, I picked up one of our daughter's books when they were in school, and they were, uh, they were just learning to read because I could tell by the handwriting in the front of the book that it was a pretty early book, but uh, the name of the book was Keeping, Keeping Friends, and uh, it wasn't wasn't long. It had a bunch of short stories in it, and the short story was uh, uh, learning how to lose. And I thought, well, this is interesting. I wonder, you know, what my daughter was reading whenever she was just barely old enough to read. So, it was a story about this boy that uh, his name was Dan. He was a fast runner. And nobody could catch him. He could catch anybody he wanted to in the class at recess. Uh, except one day this guy named Pete caught him. <clears throat> and so there was a constant uh, debate about who was the fastest. And they decided they had to have a race. And it had to be an original race. It couldn't be a race like from here to the corner. It had to be professional. So they went down to the high school track. And the coach says, yeah, you can run the race right here, but we got to do it right. So he showed them how to start, and they said, how far do you want to run? They said, well, I don't know. So how far is it around the track? He says, that's a quarter mile. And they said, is that far enough? And the coach says, no, let's go 300 yards. So they, he took some guys down at the 300-yard mark, and he got a string. He put it across there, and he says, the first one across this string is the fastest. So Pete and Dan lined up, and the, the coach fired the gun, and off they went. And Pete uh, took off like a, like a lightning. He, at at the 75-yard line, he was way ahead. So Dan was way behind. He knew that he was going to have to do something to, to get out of this. So he started, he slowed down. He started limping. And Pete went across the line. Uh, Dan was at the 75-yard line. And that, that was way behind since he was supposed to be the fastest. And so he come limping up to, there to the start finish line, and the coach says, well, "What's the matter?" And uh, he said, oh, "I said I stepped on a rock." He says, "What?" Well, coach says, "Well, I didn't see any rocks on this track." And he says, "It must have been a stick or a hole or something." And uh, he says, "Well," says that's odd. Says you know we try to keep it in good shape, and he reached down and started to untie a shoe to to. Uh, help him with his foot and he's and Dan says it's not that foot it's the other foot and uh, so didn't take long they figured out that Dan was just faking you know and so he he looked at his friends and they were all congratulating Pete and so he went he just limped off trying to limp he didn't know which foot to limp on and he went he went home <clears throat> and uh, he laid around all night next day he saw Pete at school and Pete was uh him and another guy was jumping a stick and we used to do that I don't know if you guys do that now or not but if everybody jumps to whoever knocks stick off is you know disqualified and, and people's jumping the stick keep jumping and keep raising it higher so they kept raising stick and they the boy that was that was good better than Pete uh, he jumped, he didn't knock it off, Pete knocked it off, and so Dan, he's off to the side, and he's watching Pete, and uh, he saw Pete, uh, when he hit the ground, he knocked it off, he just grinned at that other boy, and that other boy says, you got two more tries, says we get three tries if we don't knock, if we knock a stick off, so Pete, he, he backed up again, and he really looked serious, he come flying up there, and he jumped hard as he could jump, and he cleared it, except his arm knocked it off. And Dan's watching him again. He says, I wonder if 